people dispute that there's been an ongoing struggle between good and evil for at least thousands of years. Some say it's been going on for a lot longer than that. But how is this war taking shape in our generation? And what can we expect in upcoming years? Josh Peck is a writer, host of a podcast called The Sharpening, and a biblical researcher. But can you guess what impresses me most about him? His humility. Josh speaks to us today from Howell, Michigan. It's nice to talk with you again. Oh, it's great to be back. Uh, Thank you for having me, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. Josh, at first consideration, I can only think of two other people with the depth of knowledge you bring to the table who also show your level of humility. You are not afraid to tell things like you see them, but then you also present alternative views. Why do you take this approach? I just think it's more honest. It doesn't do anybody any good if we can't admit that we don't know something. You know, we're all human, we're all flawed. And when we can admit that, it really helps get the message across because people can identify with it more. Parts 1 and 2 of Disclosure lay a lot of basic biblical groundwork, preparing the way for Part 3, to which the title refers. Josh, I'd also like to add that your book, which we discussed several months ago, Quantum Creation, also lays important groundwork, although you wrote Disclosure first. Now, let's talk about the intersection of science fiction with biblical truth. I know that's unimaginable to many people, but I believe a good starting point is the Nephilim. Actually, they were the subject of a 2005 sci-fi movie with Casper Van Dien called The Fallen Ones. Josh, from a strictly biblical viewpoint, who were the Nephilim, and why are they important to our understanding of the end times? Genesis 6 tells us that the sons of God came down from heaven and took wives of all who they chose, and they bred with human women. Basically, these were the fallen angels, because, you know, they were going against God by doing this. It's important for our understanding of end times, because Jesus said that just as the days of Noah were, so would be the day of his coming. Josh, your book deals with the famous wheel-within-a-wheel prophecy in Ezekiel chapter 1. You see it as a description of a vehicle for the transportation of angels, in this instance, good angels. Would you mind building your case for us? Yeah, absolutely. And this is something that I've done a lot more research into since the writing of that book. It might be (laughs) when people are reporting these UFOs or something, they might be seeing something spiritual, and Ezekiel might have got a taste of that. Now, what Ezekiel saw, it was definitely from God. It was God's chariot, God's throne. You know, it was good angels. And presumably, in your understanding, fallen angels could also have access to this mode of transportation. Yeah, yeah. God has this amazing chariot. It would make sense that the enemy would want something like that as well. And I think that's part of what we're seeing with some of these UFOs. Josh, Could you tell us why many researchers are embracing the extra-dimensional theory of UFO inhabitants rather than the traditional extraterrestrial view? It's one thing to say, well, they're so technologically advanced that they can break the laws of physics. That's a tough pill to swallow. But if they're dealing in higher dimensions, they don't need as much technology. It would be like if there was a uh, two-dimensional universe that we breached. We wouldn't even need a vehicle to do that. We could just stick our hand in it. (laughs) Josh, let's get to the final disclosure. What has science fiction been preparing us for in terms of the end times? Especially with shows like Ancient Aliens and things like that. I think that the masses are being prepared for some type of disclosure event. And I don't know if it's going to be something that happens all of a sudden. There's going to be a bunch of UFOs and aliens are going to, you know, say that they're our creators. Or if it's going to be a lot more subtle and slowly over time things will be released. I'm kind of leaning towards the latter because that seems to be more of the enemy's tactic is to do things, you know, slowly but surely. I think a disclosure event fits really well because what else is going to deceive the entire world like that? What does it take to overcome the deception you describe. I think just a strong root in the Bible and an active prayer life, really just the relationship with Jesus. If we're confused about something or have a question, we should bring it to him and let him answer for us. I think that's the best way to defend against deception. 
Josh, it's always a pleasure talking with you. Thanks for your insights. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me on. Josh Peck is the author of Disclosure, Unveiling Our Role and the Secret War of the Ancients. You can keep up with Josh at his website, ministry.com, where you can also access his podcast called The Sharpening. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com.